Hi everybody, this is the Officially Unofficial Geek Channel, here with your spoiler-tastic weekly review from last week. I know I'm a day late, but I totally fell down a rabbit hole of videos about Halloween decorations and decorations involved in, involved in stores, and I am not sorry for it. Um, because it was fun, and I'm following new people, and I love Halloween, and so first off, in the comments, let me know how much you love Halloween, but regardless of that, we're going to talk about last week's comics in a spoiler-tastic version, um, and yeah, so what's going on, you know, um, I also watched Game of Thrones, The House of Dragon last night, still liking it, still gonna watch it, um, I just didn't do the thing like I did the first week where I live tweeted it, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do anything like that again, um, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't, anyways, my cat has to zoom me, so away we go, let's just get right into it, let's just get right into the comics here, guys, um, as always, Though I didn't do it this way last week, but as always, usually, this is in a fashion where I'm going from my least liked to my most liked, and we're going to talk about these, like I said, in spoiler-tastic vision. Ooh. Spirit fingers. Spirit fingers. Okay. So first on the hip parade, we're going to talk about Action Comics number 1046. Um, something new I've been doing, uh, lately, if you're following me on Instagram or TikTok, um, and I've posted some of them here too as well, I've been doing these 30 second comic reviews, um, for each of the comics that I read, um, and this one is no different. Action Comics number 1046. Okay, so, um... <sighs> My cat has the zoomies. I told you that already. And he is now afraid of something. One moment, please. You okay? Huh? You're now afraid of something, huh? What made you afraid? Did you see the ghost again? Yeah. Okay. He's okay, guys. Don't worry. He is the he's our scaredy cat. Mm-hmm. Um but it's like his you know he's like scared because he'll like run around like a madman and it's like his tail will go Pff. um anyways action comics number 1046 let's talk about that instead of how my cat got scared all right so here we go we finally have superman making it to the place to get what was the word that they called it? i read so many things Where is it? He has to jump, like, across all these different, uh, levels to get to the guy to get the... What was the word they called it? Damn. Hold on, guys. Swear to God, I fucking read this. Okay. Alright. So... He has to answer a riddle. And the Fire of Olgron. Thank you very much, text of book. Um, so he has to, they, they make it through the door. The problem is, is everything kind of gets blasted all to hell because, of course, they have shit attacking them as well while this is going down. Um, and so he has to kind of like Superman jump to where he has to be, right? So, um, it wasn't, it, it's just like one of those things where it's like, okay, I know that we've been going through this, um, storyline for quite some time now, and, but we just can't make it easy, um, for him to get <laughs> the fire of Algron. Um, so, all right, so he goes and he makes it across, um, and he meets, like, this, um, fairy, uh, like, 
spirit. And the spirit's like, um, so what makes you think you're good enough to do this? And he's like, um, bitch, I'm Superman. No, he doesn't do that. Um, she's just like, you like are the unbloodied sword. Like you don't, you, you, you don't kill anyone in battle. Like what, what, what did you do? What, what have you done for me lately? Um, so he's just like, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm guided by a, a, a force more powerful than fate. And, uh, and he goes and he, uh, answers the riddle. He fights and the whole test thing was one, you had to answer the riddle and two, um, you had to fight this big, um, golem, like, uh, statue type, uh, warrior. And, um, the warrior goes, like, they're going to crush this, uh, like, uh, fairy type spirit. And the fairy type spirit is like, oh no. And, uh, Superman's like, not on my watch, buddy. And he blocks the shot from the, the, uh, stone, you know, weeping angel that looks like a freaking warrior. Like, like seriously, if you watch Doctor Who, it's like anything with freaking, like anything that's freaking stone now, like could come to life any fucking time when you're not looking at it. Okay. Um, so dude, uh, you know, he, Superman blocks the shot, saves this, you know, little person they need, like this little, uh, what do we want to call it? Am I just forgetting that it actually gave its name? Um, and I'm forgetting it at this point. Guys, if I'm forgetting it, let me know in the comments. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, here's the deal. All right. So he does that. And then like, She's like, oh, dude, that means you're like, you're like an okay dude. Yeah, it's Superman. Um, <laughs> um, so, but she don't know him. She don't know him. But she's like, hey, you just saved my life and you don't even know me. Like, it's the point she's making. You don't even know my life and you saved me. What's the deal with that? And he's just like, well, you know what? I, why not? Right. And, um, so she's like, okay, you know what, dude, you're worthy. You're worthy. You, you get, you get the fire of Olgron and you get like a lifetime supply of rice aroni right here, right now. Um, congratulations. Um, <laughs> so, um, Spider-Man has his, uh, fire of Olgron. Um, wouldn't that have been funny? Like, totally would have lost, like, any credibility for the writer whatsoever if it was, like, here's your, here's the fire of Olgron and a lifetime supply of rice aroni the San Francisco treat. Um, so he's got the fire of Olgron. They are doing hella good. He comes back. See, now, this whole time he was alone and he left the two the young ones, um, with Cryolex. Um, and I, I'm calling them Cryolex because I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. And I'm pretty sure that is the, uh, brand name of a spray paint, but whatever you get what I mean. Okay. So he's like the Philodosian, um, and he left the two little kids with him. Right. So he gets back in this motherfucker. Okay. Mr. Cryolex spray paint can, okay? He has betrayed Mr. Superman. Yep. Guess who's waiting for them when they get there? That would be Mongrel, guys. That would be Mongrel is waiting for them. And he has a weird sword-like thing at the necks of the two young ones. Now, guys, this is supposed to be finished out real quick-like in... 
uh, Superman War World um, Apocalypse, something like that, uh, is the title. And I believe if it's not coming out next week or this week, um, it is more like it's coming out next week, um, I will let you know. Obviously, you'll see it here. I'm going to read it. I've been I've been on this freaking journey for what, like a year now? It's probably not been a year. It's probably not been a year. But, like, I feel like, like, Action Comics and uh, Cal-El have been, like, going towards this for, like, uh, quite a while. Quite a while. So I gotta see this shit through, right? Um, why is it on the bottom? Really, I didn't think that at this point in the game, the betrayal was really needed, um, story-wise. Um, I was just like, you know, at this point in the game, that you know, guys... Like, let's get this shit done. If there was going to be a betrayal, it probably should have happened. This is just my opinion. This is just my opinion, okay? It probably should have happened a couple issues ago. And I don't recall any, seeing any kind of, like, sight or sound of this guy, of Mr. Spray Paint Can, doing this. Um... Some things that didn't get really kind of touched on this issue that would have been nice if it got it touched on a little bit is we have um, kind of every once in a while, it's like the, the members of the authority get mentioned a lot. And then sometimes the members of the authority don't get mentioned at all. And it's like they really didn't get mentioned at all in, in this uh, issue. Um, it would have been nice to maybe have a page or two. Um, telling us something going on with them but that's okay um like i said it's gonna be over soon so um superman will be moving on and moving on up and um hopefully he will have a victory um under his spandex so uh we'll we'll be we'll be looking at it we'll be you know tuning in stay tuned here because I'll be talking about it. Next on the list, we're going to talk about Task Force Z 11. Um, this is another one that is almost to the end of its run. And it's doing some things. It, guys, yeah, guys, it's, it's definitely doing some things. Um, one of the things that, if you were to recall, like, a long time ago, when I first started reading this book, um, if I was going to guess... Somewhere around issue, because we're on issue 11 now, somewhere around issue like four, five, or six, um, Jason Todd um, gets the opportunity to exact his, what he feels like and what he thinks, he gets the exact opportunity to exact his revenge on Bane for the death of Alfred. Now, guys, if you don't know about this, one, where you been? Two, I'll tell you now. Okay, so um, a while back during a storyline during Tom King's era, um, City of Bane, uh, Bane killed Alfred. There you go. Um, that is the short version. Alfred Pennyworth was killed by Bane. Guys, it happened. Look it up. Um, so, in this whole, you know, ragtag zombie crew, um, Jason Todd being the leader of them, kind of like their handler, um, he, at first they didn't get, you know, didn't have enough of this Lazarus resin to really kind of give them a sense of, of themselves. They were really kind of beast-like. And then he gets them, uh, negotiates for them to get more. Well, here's the thing. Jason Todd negotiates for them to get more so that when he looks at Bane, Bane knows who he is, knows why he's pissed off, right? And is cognizant of what Jason's about to do to him. Um, this was very, this was a, a wonderful moment. Uh, that happened in the book. It was heartfelt. Um, I will never back down off of that because as far as Jason was concerned, that was Bane. And 
the problem is, so basically what happens is, is he, um, he's like, okay, so you remember who you are? Cool. Do you have any of your memories of your life? Yes. Cool. Do you know why I'm beating the crap out of you right now? And Bane was like, Alfred Pennyworth. And he's like, yep. And basically pushes him off the side of a very tall building. Um, which is like, if you know anything about the history of Jason Todd, Red Hood, especially under the Red Hood, okay, you know that when Jason comes back to life because he was a Robin, because he was killed by the Joker, right? When he comes back, his main issue is that with Batman is that not necessarily that Batman was late to save him, but that he was unavenged. Okay. That the Joker was still alive, that nobody killed the Joker for him. And this was like his, like, like I am going to somehow enact this revenge. I am going to avenge the death of Alfred Pennyworth and shove this guy off the side of a building. <laughs> and I'm going to wait until he knows exactly why. It was because of his history, because of who he is, it was really cool, right? Then <laughs> we get the circumstance where we find out that that is not actually Bane. That is not actually Bane. Basically, it was Gotham as in Gotham and Gotham Girl. Um, but Gotham had died, and they made him into a Bane lookalike. Wow. Because they wanted to entice Jason Todd, knowing who he is, his personality, and his history, to participate in something like this. They figured that if they get him involved, they're going to have to do something to get him involved. And they're going to have to give him, like, like you know, here's the, the shiny thing. So now that's all starting to happen. Now... You also have the, the, the whole part of the story that involves Bloom and the two different groups of basically Task Force Z um, competing against each other and everyone kind of like mishmashing, switching sides, going back and forth. The, I'm going to tell you right now, Solomon Grundy um, is, you know, one of the VIPs because he keeps on, you know, helping Jason. Good for you. Thanks, Sullivan. Thanks, Solomon Grundy. Born on a Monday. We love you. Especially, you know, anyone that loves Harley Quinn also loves Solomon Grundy, especially lately, because Solomon Grundy, um, with the exception of Kevin, like, so, like, Kevin is Harley's first best friend, and Solomon Grundy is, like, Harley's second best friend. Um, so... Everything is starting to unravel. Jason is figuring everything out. There is some unanswered questions still, still, with the whole shebang of tax, Task Force C. Um, we, Jason has now figured out and is knowing, you know, everything wasn't um, above board uh, to get him involved. Um, it's too late for him to really leave anything. Um, he, um, they basically threatened him with, um, being arrested, um, which, I mean, guys, come on, let's be real about it. Jason Todd, you know, killed people. He killed people. It's known. He did it. 
it's his own kind of vigilante, vigilante justice and he did it. So basically it's like, well, you could leave, but you probably find yourself right back here anyways. Um, so there's a lot to have happen and I think there's only one more issue because right now Jason Todd and Harvey Dent slash Two-Face are now tied up in Bloom's lab and um, they have somebody kind of, you know, trying, they have their own person trying to pretend to be Jason Todd. Now, what's going to happen with that? I don't know. Um, I've read some of the previews about that last issue and it's looking kind of like, I don't know how they're going to wrap this up. I have no clue. I have no clue, guys. And um, I'm just kind of bummed that they kind of took that moment away from him, like all those issues ago. And and it, it kind of sucks. But anyways, um, we are going to move on. And we're going to talk about Robin, number 17. This is also another book that is ending. This is the end of the line for the Robin issues as it is right now. We're going to have Robin as in Damian Wayne return in Robin versus Batman. I am not spoiling anything for you on that one. It's in the book. Um, so basically we have uh, Robin uh, bringing, um, God, what's her name? Oh, his girlfriend, you know, the girl he likes. Uh, flatline thank you thank you book i read flatline um so he um connor and flatline are coming back to discover that lord uh death i'm sorry guys hold on Lord Deathman um, has escaped. Now, Lord Deathman has his own plans involving um, everything. So basically, Flatline took one of Robin's hearts that she had torn out of him during the Lazarus tournament, gave it to Lord Deathman because that's what he wanted. Now, Lord Deathman turns around and brings it to Mother Soul. Now, Mother Soul, Lord Deathman, they have their moment. They, you know, um, and it turns out that Mother Soul had promised all kinds of stuff to Lord Deathman, and she has absolutely no intention on fulfilling. Um, so, you know, the kids come out, and, and they take care of all that action, and, um, Lord Deathman and Mother Soul would have gotten away with it, too. Um, yeah, but they do kind of get away with it, guys. I, I can't even do that. I can't even do that to you. I can't even do that to you. Um, so there is a fight with Lord Deathman, and um, he totally is like, love kills, and you're its next victim. And, uh, and then Robin tears Lord Deathman's heart out. But it's Lazarus Island, so um, he will be back. Um <laughs> So they're like, oh, well, while he's out, let's just go have some fun. So you have a summer fun uh, moment with the kids, and um, eventually everybody's like, you know what? It's about time. It's about time we all go our separate ways. But we'll meet again, and Robin's like, you know what? I got a few other things I got to handle here. Um, and it looks like uh, there's this kind of cave kind of calling to, to Robin, and we'll have to see what happens there. Um, I kind of like the, you know, like... Robin is started on this journey just kind of trying to find his own way. And I, I would kind of like to see that continue. Um, and, and maybe we'll, we'll see some more of that in, in the, uh, the upcoming title, um, Batman versus Robin or Robin versus Batman. It's one of those two. Please hold. I will check the book that I totally read. Uh, Batman versus Robin. Yeah. Uh, 
um, let me see here. They're like, you know, do you know who you are? And he's like, I'm still trying to figure it out. I like that little page right there. So that was nice. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see um, how that whole journey continues. That he's still trying to figure out himself. And uh, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm going to read it. Um, so the next issue that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Harley Quinn number 21. This is, I got I got both these. <laughs> um, so we got this one, and we got this one, and I love them, and they're groovy. Okay, so what I really liked about this issue, um, um, you have Harley just kind of interacting with, with uh, different people in different ways. And even in the moments when she's not interacting, you have her doing stuff in the background. It's it's funny because they're like saying they're like, how do we figure out this transporter thing, right? And um, Harley's just sitting there while they're arguing about what they're gonna do, and she's just figuring it out, like she's just testing it and figuring it out. She like teleports a, a big statue of Batman uh, <laughs> to Earth, and she's like, hey guys, I think I got this figured out, and they're like, wait, what did you do? Um, so when they're just sitting there arguing about who's doing what and when, and she's just like, hey, you know, how about we just do it? That's one of the things I love about Harley. She's just like, she's always, you know, people are always underestimating her and she's always like, yeah, I have a PhD motherfucker. Um. So they uh, teleport to where Luke is being chased by, Lucas Fox is being chased by the Element 10, uh, the Element X that, um, I don't know if it's Element 10 or Element X. I'm going to call it Element X. Um, that they originally were going to the moon to find, but then it teleported to Earth and now it was chasing Luke Fox, right? So Luke Fox ends up in this dome-like uh, enclosure, and he starts putting on this new, like, I'm going to say it's like a kaiju-type costume. Like, they don't actually say what it is, but to me, it kind of looks like a fox, like a kaiju or, or a fox or something like that, and I think it's kind of cool. But he but he puts on, like, like armor, like, 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 uh... He's, he's made the decision to leave Batwing behind, right? So he's not going to be Batman, uh, ba uh, Batwing anymore. He's not going to be involved in all that. He's going to be his own thing. Well, he's not really decided what that is. So when he starts doing that, um, then the rest of the crew gets back to Earth, right? And they're fighting everything. They're like, wow, you know, what's going on here? And then Luke Fox just kind of comes out of nowhere. And he's got this armor on that looks, I think... He I think it kind of looks like a fox, but that's okay. That would make sense because his name is Luke Fox. Um, and he, you know, gets everyone uh, back into his little enclosure and, and all that. And um, so everybody's doing their own thing, you know, because they're, they're just a bunch of, you know, argumentative, you know, weirdos. And... One of my, like, okay, so let, let me show you this. This is really kind of cool. Like, that is the costume. And it totally looks like, because he's got, like, little claws, but then he's got, like, the, like, like, the cheeks, I guess, of, it looks like a fox. It looks like a fox. It's cool. Um, he has reinforcements coming. Um, they get in there and they're like, okay, so we, we have to clean up this mess. Um, they're like, you know, it's like your what you're planning to do. Your plan is like running a Roomba over dog poop and, and Harley makes some jokes and, um, Luke kind of walks off. He doesn't know what to do. Right. And, um, Harley goes off and he, and he finds them, right? And, um, 
you know, it's basically like the doctor's in, you know, she's just sitting there and she's just like, you know, um, let's see here. Oh, oh yeah. So one of the most important things that happens is Luke Fox actually talks to her about her research that she did as a doctor. Um, and she says, see, the interesting thing about identity, Lukey, is that you get to choose that for yourself. I've studied personality, did my whole dissertation on it, actually. And he's like, I read it. And she's like, you read it? No one reads those things. And, and he's like, well, you asked important questions. Are we the things we do or are we, or is there more to identity and personality than our actions? And um, she's like, it's a contested topic. And he's like, your answer is no. And she says, I believe there's far more to individuality to personalities than simply hobbies or collective interests. I believe I believed it then and I have to believe it now. Otherwise, my whole redemption arc would be a real drag. But the most important question, are we going to talk about this whole new foxy costume thing? And or and no judgments from me. We we love a man who can pull off a quick costume change, especially one with that tight fitting. After I gave up, uh, and he's like, after I gave up on Batwing, there was a beef time I thought I could still wear a costume. It just wouldn't have to have a bat on it. It's like, I wanted to do the right thing. And like, says other stuff, and then she's like, you know, you can. You can do that. Um, you're not only, you're not the only one good at homework. I read about you. She's like, I researched you too. Um... And you're actually a genius. You know, you built spaceships. You've done all this stuff. And she's like, you know, look, I, I believe in you because I actually can, I, I, I get what you're coming from. I get what you want to do. I get that you don't want to be recognized for who you were. You want to, you want to have some kind of control over that. And that's why. She's just like, I get it because one, I believed it all those years ago, and two, because I'm living it. And I just thought that was really great. That that, that was one of the reasons why I actually really love this um, issue. Um, it was, to me, it was the best so far of the entire weekly Harley thing that went on here in August. Um, this week, we've got uh, the annual the annual coming and we'll be able to see what goes on involving that so we'll see what happens next one i'm going to talk to you guys about is detective comics number 1063 um this is moving along and i feel like it's one of those things where it's like it's moving along it feels like it's moving along slowly but it also is still really beautiful um I love the whole Harvey Dent with the mask that looks like the fam of the opera. I love that. Um, I'm not quite sure where this whole um, thing is going to go with the Arkham family and the land that Arkham Asylum is on. I know that that's also going to probably tie into the secondary story um, with um, with Gordon, um, and what he was doing with trying to find the one boy. And it, it's like, I love the little points where like, you've got Barbados showing up and, and it's like this, this demon that's haunting Bruce and Bruce just feels like there's a difference in, in change in Gotham and he can't quite put his finger on it. And he's actually, like, he's so, like, questioning it, and he's so, like, kind of at a loss for it that he's actually going to Harvey Dent and talking to him about it. And Harvey's like, yeah, you know, I get it, but, like, but why? You know? <laughs> um, so then you have, you know, other things happening. You have um, the end involving Harvey getting messed up by the I think it's a werewolf character to be completely honest based on the werewolf guy don't know much about him yet he's gonna be tied to the Arkham crew the Arkham group um but 
not a lot of information there about him yet. It's a mystery. It's a mystery and, you know, it's just, yeah, we'll see where this goes. Um, next one we're going to be talking about is the human target, uh, tales of the human target, more like book one. Um, I don't know why they call it book one if it's only going to be one. Um, just say one shot for crying out loud. Anyways, so I'm sitting in there and I'm reading. The, I, guys, literally, this took me like a while to read because I kept on coming back to it like in the evening and it was right before I was about to probably go to bed for the night and I kept on like having to stop because I was falling asleep. And that's not because I was bored or anything. I was, you know, just falling asleep, right? So I kept on having to stop it. But the thing is, is that was lingering in my brain um, was, what is the point of any of this? It seemed like these three separate stories that didn't make any sense in their connection to the human target. So I tried reading this for a couple days and finally... Um, my boyfriend who had already read it, I went and I was like, okay, so please tell me there is a goddamn point at the end of this fucking thing. And he's like, no, 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 there's a point. There's a point. He assured me there was a point. So I kept going and yes, goddamn, there was a point. Oh my gosh. So like you have all these stories of, uh, Booster Gold, Guy Gardner and, uh, fire telling uh, Ice of their known interaction with the human target, with Christopher Chance. And it's all involving Christopher Chance on a job. And um, they've all got preconceived notions about Christopher Chance. They're all like, it's like they're all warning her. And she's just like, you know what? This seems like fun. Like by the end of it, the last page, last couple pages is basically her just being like, the last page literally is like her being like, meh, okay, thanks. Thanks for the warning. But, uh, it's almost like she's like, I'm bored this day and I I'm bored that day. And so I'm going to get involved with Christopher Chance. I don't know. She's just, the thing is, is like, she has been painted out to be this just completely miraculous, um, character. And, yeah. She's just like, got it. She knows exactly what she's doing, and, and I can't wait to see, I believe we're starting out with, or starting back with new issues of the main storyline starting next month, I believe. So I'm really enjoying the series. I was kind of bummed that I had to like do like a little like stop, you know, a little hiatus. I kind of wanted it to just keep on going. It like did like a little hiatus, like an issue like six after issue six. And now we've got it coming back. Um, so that's great. Um, so the next comic I'm going to talk about is the Swamp Thing, 16. Um, if you watched my, um, 30 second review involving the Swamp Thing, um, I said poetic and that it was poetic and mesmerizing. And I stand by that. It is poetic mesmerizing. Um, I didn't want it to end. I didn't want it to end. I don't want this story to end. Um, I'm afraid though. I'm afraid that I don't want anyone else writing the Swamp Thing besides this particular writer, besides Rom V. Um, there's a possibility that, that years down the line, it will it will come to be that he is mentioned in the same sentence as Moore, Alan Moore. Um, 
most people consider his Swamp Thing to be that quintessential Swamp Thing um, with Alec Holland and the uh, Levi uh, Kamal uh, Swamp Thing is probably just as mesmerizing, if not more. It's poetic, it's mesmerizing. What we got is we got the end of the series that we didn't want to end. Um, but the good news is, is I feel like it kind of left it open that it wasn't like the end end. Like, um, DC Comics could, you know, totally be like, oh, shit, we forgot to tell him that we wanted him to continue that series. Guys, can we get, can we get, can we get Rom V on the phone? Guys. Rom. 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 Rom, buddy. Buddy, can, can, can we get, can we get, like, two more issues of Swamp Thing? You know what, f fuck it. Uh, Rom, um, buddy, um, can we, can we just get an ongoing? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like DC needs to be like, Rom, somebody get Rom on the phone. Yeah, Rom. DC. More Swamp Thing. More. Anyways, okay, so we've got some of the most beautiful moments um, with Swamp Thing brings Trinity to to the the to the machine, right? And he's just like, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Y'all are listening to this guy right now, this avatar of industry. And I don't think you really need to be listening to him. Like, here's the thing. We can both exist. We just have to be willing to both allow each other to exist. And then that means compromise. That, that big old word, compromise. And you know who I think would be best for that whole, you know, idea of... of you know, allowing everyone to exist in harmony, in harmony, that, that would be a best, the best way to put it, allowing everything like this, allowing your being to exist in your, your machine to exist in harmony, allowing the green to exist in harmony. We can work together. And I think the best way to do that is to bring in this woman, Trinity, Trinity becoming your avatar. And you know what? Here's the thing, guys. I'm just making the suggestion. I'm making the suggestion. Y'all, you know, discuss it amongst yourselves. Let's let me tell you a few reasons why. Let the woman, actually, let Trinity tell you why. And this is basically what happens. And Trinity is just like, you know what? This is why I'm the best person for the job. And there's this line. Oh my god, guys. There's this line. Um. This page, it was like, I was drawn here to this place. This is Trinity speaking. Um. It is all I have known. This turmoil, strife, war, and change. I was born in it. I was made uh, or made by fission when the energies of man-made bomb turned Almagordo sand into glass, trinite, they called it. A wholly unique material or a wholly unique mineral never seen before or since. Sin sometimes green, sometimes red or black. The chaos of my creation reflected in my many variations. I suspect this is why I was called here. Like you, I too am a creation of man, the unsure product of a violent idea. I too am the creation of man, the unsure product of a violent idea. So basically she's describing how she was born 
out of the atom bomb and the testing of testing of the atom bomb in the desert. Um, and <laughs> I, I had to sit there reading that part. Right. And I had to just be like, I had to put it down and just be like, <sighs> really? Oh my God. I just kind of had to sit there and have like an, Oh my God moment. Because it's just like, holy shnikes, guys. And, like, when he's just, like, sitting there and he's just, like, talking to them about how they can live together with Trinity, you know, being aware of everything. And just, it was perfect, guys. It was perfect. Perfect ending if it has to be. If it has to be. Um, and just pairing that with the, the, fuck, the art, um, Spicer, um, Perkins, just pairing that all together, the colors, everything just insane. Uh, next issue we're going to talk about is Batman beyond the white hood or excuse me, beyond the white Knight, red hood. Number two, this is our two, the second part of our two little, um, uh, two little issue um, interval here um, interlude um, in the middle of Beyond the White Knight where we have Red Hood recant recounting uh, his tale of finding and training his own Robin Gan. Gan is awesome. I love Gan. I love Gan. The whole Robin's never quit thing. Um, Gan's, you know, um, persistent nature, her, her resilient nature. And basically this is Robin. Uh, this is, this is a former Robin, Jason Todd, basically recounting his story, talking to her, um, years later, because what happens is, is he trains her and then he follows her into a fight and she gets really injured, like really bad. And, uh, so he runs off and then he doesn't see her again until this moment where he shows up and he's telling her like, look, this is what happened to me. And this is what I should have told you. And this is who, you know, I, I, I should have done all this. And she's just like, well, what's going on now? Cause I've, you know, I've heard some stuff and he's like telling her about it. Right. And she's like, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's let's do this. She just basically goes up and she picks up her her uh her her bow and arrow quiver and she's like, Let's do this. She's like he's like, I thought you changed. You have this, you know, she has this uh um idea of of uh she has a, a uh dojo, right? But she's also talking about how she you know, wanted to help people with an open hand rather than a fist. And he's like, I thought you had this whole, you know, help people with an open hand thing. And she's like, um, have you not looked around? I also run a dojo. Sometimes a fist is necessary. And she's like, I'm looking all around and I'm seeing, you know, the corruption going on in the streets now. I'm seeing the G the GTO um, abusing everything. I I'm well aware of everything going on outside my window. Okay. And now, you know what, whether you were trying to or not, you've sold me. And I, so now we're going to rejoin the whole Batman, the white knight, um, beyond the white knight, uh, universe and storyline, um, not universe, but storyline. Cause the red hood story is part of the universe, um, with, you know, enter player number, whatever. Right. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's, you know, Gan is going to be showing up and she's going to be like the, you know, she's going to be like the, the, nobody knows her except for this one guy. Uh, <laughs> um, but I like the character. I, I was totally into it. I was into, 
um, him kind of just, you know, sitting there and being like, okay, so here's the deal. Um, that didn't go the way I wanted it to. And that, that was, that was a good thing. Right. And she was just like, so open to, to him and everything that happened and, and, and how to go from there. Okay, guys, we've hit that point where we're going to talk about the book of the week. And the book of the week, I wasn't even going to read. Okay? Y'all, I wasn't even going to read this one. But then I did. I, was, I wasn't even going to read this. I wasn't even going to get into this. I wasn't even going to read this one. Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler, by Tom Kane, Mitch Shards. Jesus Christ. I wasn't even going to read this one. And then it just totally hits me. Um, so, what happened was, I go and I pick up our normal comics, right? And it was one of those things where it's like, normally my boyfriend is the one that goes and picks up the comics. But we had uh, a circumstance where this past time he was not the one to pick up the comics. All right. So I was the one to pick up the comics. So I went and I picked up the comics. And this was not included. Um, and I was under the impression we didn't want to read it. But apparently... Um, he was like, you know what? I'm hearing about it. I want to read it. So we went and picked it up and he read it. Um, and I still had no intention of reading it. Well, then he starts telling me little tidbits about, about what happens in it. Um, and eventually I was like, okay, fine, fine. I'm going to fucking read this thing. And, um, the, at first he was like, I'm not sure you're going to like it. I, you know, whatever, you know, the, yeah, but go ahead, read it. All right. So I read it and God damn, God damn, it was good. It was so like, you know, the thing is, is you hear, you hear people talk about Tom King, um, either as, you either love them or hate them. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm here to tell you right now, you can do both. Um, honestly, guys, um, anything I've read of him where he's writing Batman, great. Anything I've read at this point where he is writing Batman, he wrote 85 issues of Batman, like the main title Batman, um, basically the entire rebirth era, um, with the exception of maybe a little bit. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, anything I've read from that, that era of Batman, I have enjoyed, I have liked it. Now here's the flip side of this situation. I went ahead and I started reading Batman Catwoman, um, which was the dark label, dark label, the black label, uh, book that he started writing after he got done with his Batman run. Cause here's the thing. He was originally supposedly going, wanting to do, you know, um, I think he was wanting to do like 106 issues. That was his original plan. And he ended up doing 85. Somebody, if you, if you are like, Carrie, you're totally fucking wrong. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, but I thought I saw somewhere where he had originally planned to do like 105, 106 issues and they cut him off at 85. So basically at that point, um, his Batman Catwoman, um, run was kind of his, Kind of, you know, it's it's not canon technically, but it was kind of like his wish list on, on what he would have done uh, to end his run. And 
I started reading that. And one of the things that wasn't quite working out for me was time jumps. So you have like three different time periods in Batman Catwoman and the way he would jump between them. Uh, the only time I was not confused was when we were seeing older Selena Kyle. Then I was not confused. Um, but any other time I got kind of confused. I totally, because I did read um, the uh, Christmas special type thing. Um, I did read that. Um, I'm totally going to read all of it all at once. This is my plan. So I'm thinking it's probably better all together reading it beginning to end. And I'll let you guys know. I'm going to eventually do it. Batman and Catwoman, two of my favorite characters. You know it's going to happen. Um, so I'll, of course, probably do a video when I do that. Um, so... Then you have Tom King writing this Batman One Bad Day Riddler issue. Um, and Riddler is savage. See, that was the first thing that um, kind of drew me in and was like, you might have to read this, Carrie, was being told exactly how savage Riddler is without getting too much, you know, ruined for me, like not getting too many spoilers. Um, I personally asked for a little bit of a spoiler, um, just to kind of entice me to read it. And of course, <clears throat> Joe helped me out with that and, and, and told me. And just based on the little bit that he told me, I thought the Riddler sounded savage and of course, it's the Riddler. He's he's part of the Rogues Gallery, but savage, okay? Savage. The little bit he told me, and I'm gonna tell you guys since we we do spoilers on this show. The little bit that he did tell me about was his conversation, um, uh, little tidbits of the conversation between Batman and the Riddler that happened in the book, um, about Riddler going into the manor and uh, stealing a dollar and um, watching them sleep, watching, you know, Dick and um, Jason, and then, you know, all of them sleeping. And little Damien and how easy, and it was just like how easy it would be for the Riddler and, and, and Batman did not know how easy it would be for the Riddler to kill any of them. So basically let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning of the book here. The beginning of the book is this guy and he's just a normal Joe and he is leaving work and you get to an idea. He's got a wife, he's got kids, he's got all this shit. That, you know, yeah, he's got it. He's got it all. He's got the, he's got the, you know, the, the, the wife, the kids, the, the picket fence, and probably the dog too. Um, and the Riddler, when he leaves the building of his work, just walks up behind him, shoots him in the head. And then goes to a security camera, all calm, puts up a card that has a bat on it. He wants to speak to Batman. And Batman basically is like, this thing, he's just going to walk up to somebody and just shoot him? Fuck him. Not, more, not worth my time. No. Fuck. I'm not going to go talk to him. That's basically what Commissioner Gordon tells the Riddler, and then the Riddler is like, well, I'm just going to keep on wreaking havoc and getting people killed and murdered until Batman decides to speak to me. And that's exactly what happened. So he's getting a reputation here, guys. He's getting a reputation very much of, you know, I will murder you. I will murder your family. If I don't murder you, I'm probably going to murder your family. I'm going to actually probably 
Oh my god. He poisoned Barbara's cats. By the way, <laughs> he poisoned Barbara's cats just because Commissioner Garden was sitting outside his home. By the way, that would be my fucking origin story. I, I am a fat girl that has ankle problems, but I will sure as shit. <laughs> I would sure as shit go after anyone. Oh my god, that would be like my, my hero origin story right there. Right there. So, the Riddler has this conversation with Batman, and he's like, if you come near me again, I'm going to kill everyone that you love. Because I know that you're Bruce Wayne. Hey, first off, he knows that he's Bruce Wayne. So he knows that that's Bruce Wayne. He knows the manor. Like I said, he's, he broke into the manor. Um, he watched them sleeping. He stole one dollar just to see if he would notice. And tells him all these things. He's like, if you ever lay a hand on me, if you ever go after me again, I will go after everyone you love one by one. I will kill them. Like, I do not care. I will cut a bitch. Basically, um, now, I'm going to be at this one place, this address, for the foreseeable future. Now, you have to wonder, why is Edward Nigma, who would just like to not deal with the Batman anymore, is telling the Batman where he's going to escape to to live? Why? Why does this happen? Well, friends, another thing that's happening in this book is you are basically getting a... Um, a flashback of Edward as a kid dealing with his shitty dad and uh, how the abuse he suffered from his shitty dad basically caused him to like attack and brutally brutally attack his teacher who was actually just trying to be a nice guy and just trying to you know prepare everyone for the future by you know causing them to, to think so the thing is is like he was kind of like putting riddles in tests and Edward <coughs> was like I'm like studying all this information I know all this information and you're gonna put a riddle and not make it like extra credit and it's like not anything I can study for well fuck you you know because here's what was happening if Edward didn't get a perfect score he would come home to his headmaster father if he didn't get a perfect score his father would beat him And make him yell about how his mother was a whore. Father of the year material, y'all. Um, so, Edward leaves. Um, and when he's talking to Batman, there's this story about how, you know, he killed his mother. And so he talks about that, but then he leaves and he's at this hotel, gives him the address and everything, right? Um, if you lay a hand on me and all that, I will kill basically all your Robins. Oh, but I'll probably start with one of the females, like Stephanie or Cassandra. And yeah. So, then all this stuff starts happening. Like, it isn't, it isn't, don't lay a hand on me and then I'll never kill anyone again. It's, if you lay a hand on me, 
I'm going to kill your loved ones. But, oh, by the way, I'm also going to, like, be completely savage and kill all these other people. Including my father. So it's just, like, the police won't do anything about it. Like, he's threatening and killing police and police's families and threatening their families. He's, like, like I mentioned a few moments ago, he poisons Barbara's cats. He is asking for it, but Batman won't do anything about it because Batman doesn't want anyone to go after his family. Well, you get to a point where Batman's like, okay, enough is enough. And I'm going to tell you something. People are probably going to argue on exactly what happens at the end of this book. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I think happens at the end of this book. And I will support it because that's just how much of a peach I am. All right. So, they finally, him and Commissioner Gordon, or Gordon, Gordon, him and Commissioner Gordon finally um, do something where they kind of trick Edward. And they make him think that, because he's like got bugs all over the city, he's listening to Commissioner Gordon and Batman talk about him. And, um, oh, God, guys. holy fuck, man. Holy fuck. Um, so Riddler thinks that he's listening to the Batman talking to Commissioner Gordon live time. Live. Okay. Um. here where is it there's a uh, batman's talking here all right there's a small broadcasting device in that gargoyle there it helps him keep track of what we're planning it's all very smart that's how he wins by being very smart smart enough to knows that i have have a weakness that i have a weakness for mercy a weakness that leads to a weakness he has been exploiting these last months. But, and it took me some time to see this, on that court, he showed me that being smart can be its own weakness. That you get lost in your own as assumptions. You see, I was smart. I assumed he, he was who he was. He tells a riddle, you solve it, case closed. I assumed he couldn't question himself, that he couldn't change, that he would never let go of the reins holding, me, holding him back. That was my mistake, that he would never let go of the reins holding him back, so that he wouldn't go all apeshit and, and start murdering people needlessly like, savagely doing all this savage stuff, right? That was my mistake. Thinking I knew him. Assuming there was no limit to his fun. And I was smart. I was, and I was a fool, just like him. You see, now in his room by himself, he's making the same smart mistake I did. He assumes that I can't change. That I can't question myself. That I can't let go of my own reins. That there's no limit to my mercy. And, and he assumes that this isn't a recording. That I'm actually on a rooftop, actually saying these things. Riddle me, riddle me this, Edward. Though we meet but once, you know me forever thereafter. Who am I? And guys, this is what you're seeing when you're looking at this book. He's asking the riddle here, and he's like, who am I? Let me read that riddle to you again. And then you see all the blackness, right? Now, this is a, this is a visual thing that they used at another point in the book. Whenever somebody was getting killed. 
or whenever somebody was getting shot at, whenever somebody was getting killed, whenever something was happening like that. So you have moments where somebody was getting shot at. And it was um, Batman visited Edward's father and he was just getting shot at. And it doesn't get killed, obviously, because, you know, that thing. So then you have like these number of pages where you have these black things and basically he's tricking them all to all of his guards into shooting him, shooting themselves and they're shooting each other. And, um, they all get killed. All right, like they all get killed, um, and all those black black rectangles, black panels, are like that. That's how they get placed within the story, okay. And then you get to this point, okay, and you see all that, right? And it's just darkness to the end. And it says, let me give you the riddle one more time. Riddle me this, Edward. Though we meet but once, you know me forever. Thereafter, what am I? Talking about how um, Edward is assuming that there's, a, there's no limits to his mercy. That he can't change um, what he's doing. That he can't let go of his own reins reining him in um the answer to the riddle though you meet me once you know me f forever thereafter what am i death that's the answer to the riddle <laughs> So now everything I've shown you, can you guys assume what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to tell you that Tom Green, or Tom Green, <laughs> Tom King basically just had the Batman. In, in an Elseworlds tale, mind you, kill the Riddler because eventually he had to. Nobody would touch the Riddler because they were all afraid. And Batman wouldn't touch the Riddler because he was afraid something would happen to somebody he loves. Well, how do you eliminate that fear? Epic ending. And that's why... That's why it is issue of the week, guys. That cleverness is what got it issue of the week. It, it's it's not, it's just, it's the perfect combination of storytelling and placement of the art and, and the panels and the way the panels are set up with that, like, line, line, line of panels, like, boom, 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 like, like a fucking, like, like, film, like film, almost, like, like, if you had, like, film cells lining up, boom, 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 like, that's what it looks like, and have that happen, it's just, I loved it, but anyways, guys, um, that's it. We had kind of long video because we had a lot of, you know, a lot of books to talk about. Um, so we're going to try and keep on track with doing the, uh, Sunday night show again next week. Um, or this, well, this week, it'd be this week now. Um, but, uh, thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of my theory involving uh riddler uh one bad day batman one bad day by tom king mitch gerard's art fantastic work um let me know 
um, what you think of my theory based on what I'm reading and what I'm seeing. And I want to know, I want to know what, I want to know what everyone else thinks, even if it's just to tell me I'm completely wrong and why. I, I mean, the thing is, is you're going to have, you're going to have your people that are just like, no, 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 Batman doesn't kill. And then they don't want to move from that mindset, right? Totally get that. Because we have had decades upon decades of the idea, Batman does not kill. Well, here's the thing, guys. This is kind of an Elseworlds tale. Um, it's not canon. It's not anything like that. And you have everything Batman's saying about how he knows, he thinks he knows me. He knows that I'm merciful and I'll never kill him. But what if I let go and what would cause me to let go? And he assumes that I'll never let go of my own reins, that I will always bestow that mercy upon someone. And it's a concept of mercy that gets brought up in the book, throughout the book. And it's, it's great. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you um, loved that you read this week. Let me know what you think of my idea, my comprehension of Batman One Bad Day Riddler by Tom King and Ms. Sherrards. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys soon. I'm going to let you guys go. This has been a long video. Um, like I said, uh, check out uh, the other videos on our channel. Um, check out my 30 second reviews um, when I put them out. Um, they're spoiler free usually and it's usually a little bit of a preview of what I'm going to bring to the table on my long show, my spoiler-tastic show. So a little something new I'm doing. Um, yeah, so thanks for uh, coming on this journey with me, guys. Thank you for watching. Please, if you have not already, like, subscribe, comment. Like I said, um, follow me on the social medias. You know where to find me. It's officially unofficial geek on Instagram. It is at Carrie Q Author on Twitter and on TikTok. It's officially unofficial geek. Thank you guys, and I'll be seeing ya.